Hi guys, welcome back to Learning Excel and today we'll be doing the Excel Project Media Hub. Okay, step one. Olivia Clausen is a product analyst for Media Hub, a website that sells audiobooks, movies, TV shows, and other media around the world. Olivia is tracking for the year and asks for your help in projecting future sales and visualizing the sales data. The United States, Canada, and Australia worksheets have the same structure and contain similar data. Group the United States, Canada, and Australia worksheets to make changes to the three worksheets at the same time. The first change is to display today's date. Okay, so first we're going to go to United States. Now we're going to click Shift and we're going to click Canada and Australia. So that will group all of them. In cell H1 of the United States worksheet, enter a formula using the today function to display today's date. So we're in the United States. Right here where it says date H1, you're going to click enter and you're going to type in today and then you click enter. So it'll look like that. Two, find the text science fantasy and then change it to science fiction to use the more common term. So, so we're going to go to science fantasy and we're going to double click this and we're going to change it to fiction. Okay, so it looks like that. Three, use the month name in cell H5 to fill the range I5 to O5 using names of the remaining months in the year. Okay, so we're going to go to May, which is H5. Now we're going to use the green dot and we're going to drag it all the way to 05. So it should look like that. 4. Olivia wants to use the cell formatting and merge cell H6 and other places in the workbook. I'll create and apply cell styles as follows. A. Create a cell style name subhead based on the formatting in the merge cell H6. So we're going to go to H6 right there. Now we're going to go to cell styles, which is right here, click the down arrow, and we're going to go to new cell styles. Then make sure, and we're going to change that name to subhead, click OK. B, apply the new subhead cell style to the cell H8. So we're going to go to H8, and we're going to go to cell styles, and right here where it says subhead, we're going to click that. So this should look like this. 5. Olivia thinks Media Hub has a good chance of increasing the number of audiobooks downloads in the United States to 14,000 in December. For May, she estimates 11,432 downloads, which is the average number of monthly downloads from January to April. Project the number of downloads in June to November by filling the series for the first projection, range H7 to 07 with linear trend. So first we're going to select H7 to H so and then we're going to go to right here, hover over it, it says fill, click the down arrow and click series. So make sure it's on linear and we're going to click trend and we click OK. So then it'll look like that. Six. Olivia also wants to know how the numbers of downloads would increase if customers downloaded 3% more audiobooks each month from June to December. Project the number of downloads in June to December for the second projection. Range H9 to O9 based on the growth of a series using the 1.03 step value. So we're going to select H9, O9. Now we're going to go back to the fill button, click the down arrow, and click series. And the step value is 1.03. And we're going to click growth. And click OK. So now it'll look like that. 7. Olivia wants to consolidate the sales data in the United States, Canada, and Australia on all the locations worksheet. Ungroup the worksheets, go to all location worksheet, and then consolidate the data as follows. So to ungroup, we're going to right click, and you're going to click ungroup all sheets. We're going to go to all locations, and it should look like this. 
A. Install B6 into a formula using the sum function and a 3D reference to total the number of downloads of adventure audiobooks in January. Sell B6 in the United States, Canada, and Australia. So to do that, we're gonna go to first. We're gonna go to B6. You're gonna click. You're gonna click enter. You're gonna type in sum. Make sure it says sum. You're gonna go to United States worksheet and you click B6 comma go to Canada click B6 comma go to Australia B6 and click enter and it should look like this B copy the formula in cell B6 to calculate the number of downloads for the other types of books and months ranges B7 to B11 and C6 to E11 by pasting the formula only so we're gonna first copy command C B7 to B11 and you're gonna click right here where it says paste and you click formula all right and then now we're gonna copy we're gonna click escape and we're gonna copy the whole thing control C and we're gonna select from C11 to E E11 so then we click formulas and it should look like this. C. In cell B16, enter a formula using the sum function and the 3D reference to total the sales of adventure audiobooks in January. Cell B16 in the United States, Canada, and Australia. So I'm going to go to cell B16, which is right here. Click enter and type in sum. And then we're going to United States. And you're gonna click on B16, comma, Canada, B16, comma, Australia, B16. You click enter, and it should look like this. D. Copy the formula in cell B16 to calculate the sales for the other types of books in months. Ranges B17 to B21, C16 to E21, pasting the formula only. So we're gonna first go to B16. You're gonna click Control C, then you're gonna select from B17 to B21. You're gonna click Formulas, and then we're gonna escape. You're gonna select B16 to B21. Control C. Then you're gonna select from C16 to E21, and it should look like this. Eight. Olivia wants to round the total sales value so that they are easier to remember. And A. In cell B22, add the roundout function to display the total sales for January rounded up with two zero decimal places. So we're gonna go to B22. Remember to click Escape first. B22. You're gonna go before sum, and you're gonna type in roundup. And we're gonna add parentheses. So right here, you're gonna put comma zero for zero decimal places, and you're gonna put end parentheses and enter. B. Fill the range C22 to F22 with the formula in B22. So we're gonna copy. First one, Control C, B22, and it's C22 to F22. We're gonna select those. And right here, go back to paste and click formula. And it should look like that. Nine. In cell F24, Olivia wants to display the total sales from the previous year for the same period. The data is stored in another workbook. Insert the total as follows. Open support EX19 5A sales XLSX. So it's going to look like it's this one, this sheet. In cell F24, uh, Olivia's workbook, insert a formula using an external reference to cell F22 in the all locations worksheet in the support ex 1958 So we're going to go to F24, which is right here. You're going to click enter, go back to the sales worksheet, and you go to F22, which is right here, and you click enter. 
So it should look like this. 10. Olivia wants to visualize how the sales of each type of audiobooks contributed to the total sales for January to April. Create a chart as follows to illustrate this information. A. Create a D3 pie chart that shows how each type of book ranges A16 to A21 contributed to the total sales F16 to F21. So we're going to select A16 to A21, then you're going to click Command and F16 to F21. Then we're going to go to Insert, and we're going to go to where this is pie chart right here. You're going to click down arrow and click 3D pie. B. Move and resize the chart so the upper left corner is in cell B25 and the lower right corner is in F40. So we're going to drag this to B25. Right here. And we're going to drag this one to F40. Just like that. 11. Format the 3D pie chart as follows to make it easier to interpret. Use total sales as the chart title. So I'm going to change this to total sales. Add data to labels to the chart on the outside end of each slice. I'm going to go to chart design and we're going to click add element chart. Go to data labels and click outside in. C. Display only category names and percentage values in data labels. We're going to go back to add chart element. We're going to go back to data labels, more data label options, and we're going to select percentage and category name was it? Yes. And also unclick show leader lines. And there you go. D. Change the number format of data labels to percentage with one decimal place. So we're going to go back to add element chart, go to data table, and you click more data table options. And click to close the label options, and click open number. Then we're going to change this to percentage, and we're going to change the decimal places to one, and click enter, and close. E. Explore the largest nice mystery audiobooks by 8%. So we're going to go to mystery. We're going to double click it. And it says point of explosion. And we're going to change that to 8%. Just like that. F. Remove the legend which repeats information in the data tables. So we're going to go back to the chart and we're going to go to chart design, click add element chart, click legend and click none. And it should look like this. 12. Prepare for printing the all location worksheets as follows. A. Change the top and bottom margins to 0 0.25. So we're going to go to page layout. We're going to go to margins. We're going to click the down arrow. We're going to go to custom margins. And we're going to change this to 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. Click OK. B. Select the range A1 to F41 as the print area. We're going to go to A1. to F41. Which is right here. So we're here where it says print area. We're gonna click the down arrow and click set as print area. C insert a footer that displays the sheet name in the center selection. So we're gonna go to insert and where it says header and footer, we're gonna click that. So then, we're going to click Custom Footer. In Center Selection, you're going to click 
hover over and just say insert sheet name and click OK. And click OK. 13. Olivia wants to compare sales for January and April, but she doesn't want to clutter all the locations worksheet with another chart. A. Create a worksheet using sales comparison as the worksheet name. So we're going to click plus. We're going to name it sales, sales comparison. B. In cell A1, type total sales and resize the column A to its best fit. So I'm going to go to A. Total sales. Right here between A and B, we're going to double click. C. In cell B1, enter a formula using a worksheet reference to display the total sales amount from F22 on the all locations worksheet and then resize column B to its best fit. So I'm going to click enter, go to all locations and click on F22 and click enter. Then we're going to go to between B and C and double click. D. Return to all location worksheets and insert a cluster column chart based on the non-adjacent regions a15 to B21 and E15 to E21. So I'm going to go back to all locations. We're going to select A15 to B21. Then you're going to click Control. Then you're going to click Command E15 to E21. Okay, we're going to go to Insert. And right here where it shows the bars, it's just hover over it. And so it's like Cluster Column. And you click Enter. E. Move the cluster column chart to the sales comparison worksheet. So in order to do that, we're going to so we're going to click on the chart. We're going to go to chart design, and where it says move chart and change all locations to sales comparison, and click OK. So then it should appear in sales comparison. F. Position the cluster column chart so the upper left corner is in cell A3. Then we're going to move it to A3, so we're going to hold the chart and drag it to A3, just like that. 14. Olivia wants to use a copy of the United States worksheet as a template to track sales in new locations. Copy the worksheet as follows. A. Create a copy of the United States worksheet at the end of the workbook and rename the copy using new location as a new worksheet name. Right click United States, click move our copy, and you're gonna click move to end and click create a copy. And click OK and type in new sorry can talk, new locations. Just like that. B. On the new locations worksheet, clear only the contents from the cell containing data, not formulas. For in the ranges B6 to E11 and cell H2. So B B6 to E11. Command H2 and then you're gonna right click it and you're gonna click clear contents. And there you go. And well, thanks for watching guys. Please comment on what video to make next. Bye!